Hello and welcome back super mums. In today's video we are speaking to Beta from the Low Carb Universe. Um, they run some absolutely amazing events in Europe and I thought she would be the perfect person to get on to start nailing down this topic of are carbs bad? It's brought up a lot as the the like the demon food um, and really wanted to get into the nitty gritty of it because if you've been following me on any other social media at some point I will have mentioned my opinion on carbs and I th thought it was really essential to have someone else's voice in on this as well. <laughs> please make sure you are liking sharing and subscribing so we can reach out to more mums and help them enjoy their motherhood so thank you very much for joining us and um, please just give us a little bit of an introduction into who you are and um, and what you do oh well hi Jessica first of all thank you for having me it's a pleasure uh, I am Bitta and as is Instead, I'm one of the co-founders of the Low Carb Universe, uh, arranging low carb events in Europe. And I am 52, I'm soon to be 53. I uh, live in Sweden, I'm, I'm Swedish, I live in Sweden, uh, and part-time actually in Mallorca, where we have had uh, most of our, our three first events in this beautiful island in the Mediterranean. Uh, I am the former dieting queen, I've tried all pills, I've tried all the powders and all the soups and Weight Watchers and everything and I've been, I think I started dieting when I was like 16 years old. And uh, now in January I've been doing low carb for um, 10 years actually. And I still feel that I can get health advantages after such a long time because you, you don't start with one way of doing low carb and you keep it all all your life because things happen to your body in my age is the menopause so things change and you change your diet after that so and and before i uh, I'm, i started doing those events i was a marketer and a reporter and i also trained to be a dietary advisor in low carb a few years ago so all that took me to the event planning thing. Oops, <laughs> sorry. A lot, a, lot, a lot of experience and a lot of knowledge there. Yeah. It, is an, it is an absolutely fascinating subject. Um, yes. But I'm, uh, well, I'm gonna try and stick with my questions because we like <laughs> to try and keep these videos short and to the point. Yeah. I know some yeah. of my interviews can run quite long. <laughs> and so the big question is, it is demonized carbs are demonized but is it is it rightly so what is the actual factual evidence behind it and and what what have you seen is is the sort of real story behind this thing are are carbs bad yeah uh, yes and no it depends on which carbs you're talking about carbs on veggies are seldom uh, bad i talk more about uh, added sugar Refined sugar, uh, refined flour, uh, wheat is totally off for me, and any flour. Uh, and, and when it comes to the, the, the science, there are so many studies that says, uh, depending on who reads them or interprets them, it, it's, it could be like, oh, this one says it's good, and this one says it's bad. So don't mind. We, we, the, the thing we need, we need more high quality and independent uh, studies on what carbs do uh, for special health issues like diabetes and so on. But uh, in, in you, I don't think you can find anyone telling people it's good to eat added sugar and candies and uh, cookies and cupcakes and sodas and chocolate bars. So I think uh, that is uh, something like a consensus in the dietary industry or in the dietary community, actually. Mm -hmm. So uh, I wouldn't say that all, all are bad, but some are real uh, evil. <laughs> 
because there is this the whole conversation about um the actual research behind food and things uh particularly in america they're like medical advice is always tainted by the fact that people are trying to make money from it and everyone's like well they're telling you low carb's bad because they want to sell you a book about low carb and um, and then the other people are saying oh they're they're telling you carbs are good because they want to sell you all these high carbohydrate products and it's yes. quite overwhelming with all the the information so what what really turned you what made you go on to the low carb side of things i i had gastritis very bad gastritis i had been on medication for like almost 10 years i was overweight i was snoring because i had a chronic inflammation in my nose i don't know what they are called these things inside and uh, i had migraines i had no energy i had dry skin i didn't sleep that well i had no yeah i was in a not so good condition so i i just googled and I found uh, a Swedish blogger, uh, Dr. Annika Dahlqvist. She is like the queen of low carb, high fat in Sweden and actually in the world. And she said that eat, eat butter and drink cream and uh, skip mm. the sandwiches. And, and, and I, I thought that this lady is crazy. She is going to kill us all. Uh, but something stuck in my, in my head. It, it made sense. And after one year, because I was so afraid of fat, it took me one year to look at all different forums and to read books and to read bloggers. And uh, then I started. And after three days, my tummy was calm. I had no gastritis anymore. Uh, after three months, I had lost 10 kilos. I don't know what can that be like 20 pounds or 25. I, I, I don't know the that system but uh and after a few more months i didn't snore anymore i have instead of having two or three um attacks of migraine a month i have it like two a year and um yeah my skin is better and i'm i'm being for 50 almost 53 i'm in better shape now than i was like when i was 30. Oh, I was going to say that's that's the big thing is I see story after story like yours real when I say story real real stories true stories um where going low carb has been so successful like absolutely yeah. life changing in some cases yeah. life saving um yeah. I ha know someone closely my partner knows someone closely that both were given terminal brain tumor diagnoses I'm saying that right diagnosis and when one one of them his only tactic was was low carb that was it he went on to a very very restrictive diet was given i think six months and um six years or something later he is now back eating much more normally than he was he went very very strict but but has no brain tumor um another lady it was the vast majority she had some additional treatment but the massive part of it was this low carb diet and she's done a low carb cookbook since um and years later she's she's here she's she's brain tumor free i was not meant to be able to have a, a small human carry a child myself um and while my story has kind of lots of parts to it the the time i had i conceived on what would have been my third period in a row um which was the first time since junior school um so the first time in over 15 years that i would have had three periods in a row and it was at the point in my life where i was at my lowest car i was at my lowest carb intake um and it's just mm. story after story of positive mm. results um yeah. yet we still really question it yet I don't hear any negative stories of maybe they are out there. Maybe I'm looking in the wrong places. Yeah. I'm sure I get loads of people saying yeah, yeah, but, to them now. I never see bad stories about people going low carb. <laughs> it doesn't fit everyone. I, I, I think I think it's a very sane diet for for almost everyone, but sometimes it, you have to choose a way. You have to do the best you can. Yeah. to to make your health uh, to boost your health and that could be like skip all the cakes and chocolate bars the added sugar but keep your bread buy a bread that is not made out of wheat maybe a rye bread 
and uh, skip all the light products, go for full fat uh, products, and uh, try to to avoid um, fast food and uh, frozen bread dishes and so so. And 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 one thing I, I think about when when I t think about the science part of it, that anyone eating, they, because people that don't like low carb, they say, oh. Uh, but what's the science? Where's the science behind it? And I used to ask them, then, but what science have you read to eat the way you are eating today? I don't think anyone, normal people, a normal person, eating like the dietary, the official dietary advices, have read the uh, science behind it. I, yeah. It's very simple. Make your own food. Uh, and uh, don't buy any fake foods. Yeah, and you, yeah, you, yeah so it's, don't complicate it. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So we we've touched on. I think the the big one, and I imagine a lot of people watching this are going to be watching it for the weight loss side of things and going yeah. low carb for weight loss. And we've touched on some of the other health benefits. What other, within your community, what other health benefits have you seen? Oh, from I, uh, I, I, my partner in uh, our company, uh, Hanna Boetius, she's a type 1 diabetes and uh, diabetic, and uh, she discovered low carb like five, six, seven years ago, and that t turned all her life around. And uh, she now uh, feels much better and has a more stable uh, blood sugar level. And uh, I and, and Hannah, we've been working, um, uh, what you call when you get no salary? Non-profit, it is. Yeah. Non-profit. Yeah. With, with helping uh, diabetics in Sweden. We, have, uh, we are not into that now since we're working with uh, these events now. But it, that group has about 13,000 members, and there are type 1s, type 2s, and pre-diabetics and so. And there are so many type 2 diabetics that go over to this kind of eating. Mm -hmm. And uh, it takes them less than a week to lower their uh, morning sugar. And they feel so great. I get goosebumps because that's it. This, is very, this is my passion, helping people like that. So that is a fun thing. And, and uh, when, when they, uh, also in the group, we notice a lot of other, and uh, like you said, I have a, a, a great big community and I hear so much. It's the mental health. Yeah. People get, I, I had a burnout 17 years ago. And when I changed my diet and went low carb, it was like <sighs> a release to my soul, actually. And... Uh, oh. We, we have the, uh, the, and the migraines, we have uh, different uh, inflammatory diseases uh, like uh, Crohn's, you know, when they have inflammation in the intestines. And uh, yeah, there, there, are so, there are so many. And you, uh, eczema, uh, psoriasis, and um, yeah. Another problem that diabetics could have, uh, poor eyesight. There are people that turn that development around the other way that they actually improve their eyesight because they don't they are not hurting small small blood vessels anymore and it's, nervous it's damage is crazy yeah. it's, yes it's, it is it's, it's crazy how much it's crept into our diet and i think a yeah. big a big part of that is because it's so addictive and it's, i think the the the, the um the product developers, the, the people that are trying to make money out of what we eat as opposed to trying to do us do good by us, um, have realized, oh, we make a product with loads of sugars in it. And people will get addicted to it and want to buy it. And it's easier to make something cheap and mass produced taste good if you go the sugar route. I, it's much exactly to make something savory taste good, but that doesn't mm. mean it's bad. It just, it's they're these, the production people are going cheap and easy and filling things with sugar and we're getting addicted. If, if you had cocaine regularly every day and were dependent on it and were telling your friends, well, I can't function without cocaine, someone would tell you to go to rehab. Someone, hopefully, you'd have a friend member that would set up. 
yet this is what exactly what we do with sugar and I see it particularly with mums oh I I can't function without a cake or a, this kind of drink or that kind of drink mm. and I'm like you have an addiction you have an actual addiction you need help yeah. we need or, to stop normalizing least... it <laughs> Yeah, but but because when when you are uh, I I'm, I'm a mom of two myself, but they are like seventeen and and twenty seven now, so I have I have no worries about them uh, when it comes to my energy. <laughs> but uh, the thing is, when when you start your day and you get going with the kids, and if you're a stay at home mom and you have the chores to do at home and do everything, and then you you feel. Uh, after lunch like one hour after lunch or something that you feel a bit tired like this and then you go and grab that cupcake or that chocolate bar or that cookie or uh, and then you feel a bit uh, more energetic for maybe an hour or two and then the blood sugar levels goes down again yeah. and you feel this oh yeah and you go for that so yeah. and it can be hard it, because if if you have a lot of responsibility and have a lot of kids and and a lot of uh, yeah. things to do, it could be hard. But it is so worth it. It is so worth to worth to have those maybe one week or sometimes two. You, you can be when 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 going low carb and you quit all the sugar and so. First of all, if you really have been into sugar, you you can get like uh, abstinence. But it doesn't have to mean that you are an addict. It doesn't yeah. have to mean that. But the body reacts. And you can get a headache. And um, you can feel annoyed. And you can feel angry. And you can feel sleep bad. But, uh, and, and, it's all, it's, and even if you're not in that into sugar, you, can have, um, you have an adapting time for your body because your body is used to taking the energy from glucose in the in muscles and blood and everywhere it is in the body. And when the glucose is, uh, after a time on low carb, gets away, uh, disappears from your body, the body thinks, like that, oh, where, where am I going to have my energy from now? <laughs> and uh, it can take a, a, a little time for it to understand that, okay, I've got some fat stored here. So, but when you, once you've adapted, many people get like an energy kick. Mm -hmm. And you feel uh, a bit like, uh, you, like you're drinking. Uh, not, uh, not like you are drunk, but you know, you can be relaxed yeah. and you feel happy uh, yeah, if you don't drink too much. But yeah. it's like an, uh, you wake up one, you can go to bed one evening and feeling like, oh, I'm, I'm quitting this. I'm not doing low carb anymore. And the next morning you wake up and ta-da, and you feel yeah. like I will conquer the world. I was going to say, that's, that's the biggest negative really, isn't it? That this, this sort of yes, comes down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I can't think of any else because you, the, the rice and potato and the French fries and, and the stuff you normally eat with your protein, it, you, add, it, you, you take that away and instead you eat vegetables. And there's nothing wrong with eating vegetables, you know. I think everyone knows that there's a lot of uh, nutrition in veg vegetables. So it's very easy. You, when you are going to cook, you take uh, protein. It's like uh, chicken or fish or egg or uh, beef or a hamburger. Mm -hmm. And then you add some uh, veggies, veggies and then you add fat. And you don't have to pour fat on your food because that's, that is all new. That is old. That is what people thought in the beginning of, of low carb, that you need a lot of fat. You need fat because your body wants energy. But if, you're, if you have like 15 kilos overweight, there is quite enough fat on your body for your body to use for energy. So have a little fat and, and no, no light products because they, when they make light products, they put out, they take away the fat. And to make it eatable at all, they add sugar. Some people, uh, the best for them is to go cold turkey, just to change of a night. I could do that. And other people, especially when you're 
very addicted or, or for uh, to sugar because you need to slowly slowly adapt to to a low carb uh, way of uh, eating because it could be like you get a backlash and then you oh i need sugar i won't do this so take it slow and try and read and learn try to yeah. to to get some knowledge before you start so you don't do it wrong it is very easy but we are so destroyed by the authorities with what they've been t telling us go low fat and everything that and eat your sugar it's no problem so we had to reprogram yeah i mean i i i believe in this so much that my daughter my daughter she's just coming up 20 months and she's predominantly well she no, it is a low carb diet there are some carbs in there um yeah. she loves her veggies and things we haven't had to do any snacks or anything with her yeah. um i very much see people uh, feeding emotions i see that a lot is yeah. uh, the kids upset and so they give they give a snack and things to quiet and and for me that cre that's that's a, a young person image of emotional eating. They're showing an emotion and you're giving them food. Of course, we turn into a, a generation of emotional eaters later on. And um, so we haven't had to do any snacks. She has three meals a day. And occasionally she she'll, might have an extra bit of banana or extra bit of an apple during the day. But she doesn't know what a rice cake is. She hasn't touched any of the, the, the sort of... Um, fake food that, that I, I don't know if it's as bad there but in the uk the supermarkets are lined with shelves and shelves and shelves yeah. of baby snacks toddler snacks yeah and i'm like oh they are oh, they drive me nuts they drive me nuts i'm like it's not real food i don't want to feed yeah. her but it's the food equivalent of plastic i don't i don't want that in her body and the chemicals as well and I just keep thinking of her poor little ovaries trying to develop. Um, yeah. I've got polycystic ovaries and it's yeah. something like one in, one in nine women now has that. I'm like, there's something wrong in our diet and culture that's created this. And for me, yeah. I'm not risking her with lots of carbs and I'm not risking her. We, we, she has organic meat. When, I'll be honest, we're not as good with us because it is a lot more expensive to do it organic the whole time. Um, but her, um, any meat uh we do organic and fish we do organic where possible because there are quite a lot of fish in the uk we can't get as organic um so yeah this, she's she i'm just very worried about these these chemicals and these sugars getting into this poor little developing body mm -hmm. and i see even me if i have a day a half a day where i have more carbs how much worse off i am my straight like literally from a half a day my skin will break out my hair will be more like Ugh, i will have less energy i will not be able to lift i like weightlifting i will not be able to lift as much like i get weaker i get more tired i'm grumpier and and i do think that's massively played a part with why my daughter on the whole is is she still has a don't worry she still has a strops and things but she seems to be much less severe than all my friends are saying they're having problems with um mm. and the difference i see a lot of us are doing exactly the same thing except she's on low carb diet and they're not and i'm like could you take the sugars out and they're like oh no no she has to have that food like they need it or that's the food she demands and i'm thinking these toddlers are already addicted to sugar yeah. That's, they're not, not, they're not yeah, even they, they are. addicted to sugar. Yeah, uh, because the, the, the thing with the products, it, 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 we got it in Sweden as well. And uh, here in Mallorca, I see, because here they are up until like uh, 20 years ago, uh, the, the food was, you didn't see all those Coca-Cola signs, you see, didn't see those, you, you know, like plastic bags that the children yeah. suck on. It's, oh yeah yeah but they need they need to use their mouth they need to to chew to develop and yeah. and the correct correct way and they are getting uh, chubbier and chubbier here and uh, and and i i my i'm so happy i only gave my daughters canned food you know those small uh, cans yeah. with glass jars with uh, baby food and if i had children today 
I would never buy them special food. I would give them, would give them exactly what I eat. I just, no. And, and people think I'm a bit crazy about it, but when I've seen, I say, friends get rid of terminal cancer diagnosis issues and me getting my periods back being on it and the amount of weight I lost. Um, I went from a UK size 16 down to a size 6 in 11 months. And I was okay. eating loads, but I suddenly wasn't eating carbs. Um, mm. And... And I was bad. I was really here. bad before. I was really yeah. bad before. And yeah, it's it's just crazy. So, um, so, so do you have any advice for people that are going to make this transition? It is, it is, t- it is tough. Like we say, it's an addiction. You're weaning yourself off, and and also battling. You're kind of battling society because society are telling you, no, no, no. You need lots of carbs, and it's okay. And eat this, and eat this, and eat this. What What's your advice? And and maybe some some things that helped you on your journey um i be, i had learned a lot because i read a lot to to so i i had the arguments and everything but uh, it compared uh, when i transitioned into this to how it is today people overall uh, in general agree on the sugary thing you don't have to explain actually, but the, there are so many other things they don't understand why you eat potato and why you eat blah 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 and bread and so. But uh, the best thing is to uh, learn and read. And I would actually uh, recommend people to visit uh, dietdoctor.com because he has a site with it, it's loaded with knowledge and uh, information and facts and. Uh, they also have this uh, startup, like a beginner's uh, program for two weeks, like a kickstart, where you get menus for two weeks and you get a, a lot of support. And yeah, and, and it's actually for free. So, oh, perfect. Uh, nice. I, 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 I'm not sponsored, but uh, he's Swedish and we're very proud of the company that they are, he's been building. And it's a very good uh, thing to, if, if you don't know anything at all. You can learn from there. And then you go and clean up out your fridge and you clean out your pantry and you throw all the sugars away, you throw all the flowers away and it might be like the other parts of your family isn't that into this as you are. And so let me tell you, when I started, um, my daughter, my youngest daughter, she has celiac disease. So she's eating uh, gluten-free food, as I, but she, she wants the gluten-free products. But I don't like it, but that's the way it is. And uh, so when I started, I, I made like uh, bolognese at home. That I can do with one that fed us all. And then I uh, steamed broccoli for myself. I boiled gluten-free pasta for my daughter and normal pasta for my husband. <laughs> so it's doable. And you just have to, I'm going to do this. Yeah. And, uh, and um, uh, don't be, in the, in, the, in the beginning, eat when you're hungry. Uh, and if you eat from the right things, you don't worry. It's an adapt, adaptation period. And uh, I ate a lot. I ate four times every day when I started. I did that for several, uh, for like three months two deciliters of whipped cream every night with berries. And I lost a lot of kilos, although. So um, you, you have to, to try to, your goal, I should say, is to learn to listen to your body, what it's signaling. If it's, because I'm very periodic in the way I eat. Uh, right now I'm eating a lot of protein. I'm almost uh, 100% carnivore. And, uh, and then sometimes I feel like, oh, I would love an avocado. I would love some asparagus. Then I eat that because yeah. it isn't uh, written in stone, as we say. And, and if you feel uh, like your uh, uh, headaches could be normal, it could be usual because when you, when you start to eat low carb, if you have eaten a lot of uh, pre-made food earlier, that is, there is a lot of salt added in that food. So salt binds water in your uh, body. So if you don't get salt in the food, 
uh, it will go out with the with the, because it's four or five kilos most times uh, is water and when you lose all this water you lose a lot of salt so take a small uh, pinch of salt and it should be a nice uh, salt uh, like a sea salt or something and put it on your tongue and then uh, swallow it with a half a glass of water that could help many times if you feel that a headache is coming and uh, yeah and you have to oh, and everything is so individual it depends on how is your partner how is your how are your children do you have how is the people your colleagues what are they saying but it it usually after a while it's not a, a big problem because you feel so great and i used to to tell people that okay let them ask you and uh, say that you are a fool or crazy or whatever you know after a while you will go there and be the one okay yeah i'm feeling just fine you see i lost a lot of weight have you noticed how much energy i got never mind don't care about yeah. what other people say it drives me it drives me nuts i'm not the person to get into like a health food debate with because i won't let it go <laughs> um and i I will, I'll link all the, the, the recommendations that you've given as well. I'll link those down in the description below. Um, and there was a book that you've recommended to me as well. I'll link that down below as well. My personal book recommendation is Why We Get Fat, which um, is actually our monthly giveaway book in the Facebook group. Um, so some of you may have already seen that when you're watching this. And that for me sums up really nicely in a very easy digestible, pun intended, um, easy digestible way and is a very much a if I'm if I'm sort of struggling with with carb motivation I really listen to that I listen to most of my books I don't actually read the paper copies um, I go back and listen to a bit of it again and it just makes me go yes I know I'm doing this now again I sort of remember and um, so that's definitely that's my personal book recommendation is why we get fat and i'll link that down below and i'll link the the book that you've recommended and the website that you've recommended um but i think it's a really important can you um give us a little bit about you've got an event coming up it's march isn't it your next event yes yes we, we it's the second edition of our women's health uh, event uh, so we met the first time in March in Majorca uh, this year and we it was so popular and uh, so we decided to do it again so it, it, the thing is that we are focusing on women's health out of a low-carb perspective and we are looking at hormones we are looking at training at uh, oh uh, everything that you can think of uh, mind-body connection Mm -hmm. uh, self confidence and uh, yeah, a lot of uh, the different subjects that all end up to a fantastic women thing. I, I'm not. I'm not that. I, I don't care if people are women or if they are men. But uh, and I never thought that our key ladies event would be would turn out the way it did because when you gather a bunch of women that have the same interest but different uh, experiences and uh, they've been go going through different things it's like something magic happens mm. so it, we were 35 because we, we we love to keep this small we can get a, a few more guests but uh it was like something just <laughs> And everybody opened up and they shared their experiences and, and, and their knowledge. And, uh, you know, both speakers and guests, we, we, um, we are social like 24-7. We stay in the same place. We eat together. We do everything together this uh, long weekend. So if anyone wants to make a kickstart uh, in the beginning of the year, I really, really recommend you to come. And it's not far from the uh, no, no. UK. No, no, no. no. Uh, like flights so, out, out the UK are pretty good. And, uh, what is yes, it? they are. Yeah, so I'll, I'll, link, I'll link all the details and things down for yeah. the event and to find your website below. Um, what's your preferred social media platform if people want to hunt you down on social media as well? 
we're most active on Facebook. Uh, really? And uh, then the second one is Instagram and the third one is Twitter. So we are everywhere, but uh, Facebook and for, for all the information about the events and so it's almost best with Facebook. But Instagram is good as well. Perfect. Well, whatever your, whatever your preference um, for the viewer, whatever your preference to come and connect, I will make sure I've linked all the best options down below wherever you're finding this video as well. And um, thank you so much for joining us tonight. I'm going to sign off now and, and wrap this up because I know I get in trouble for making these videos too long. So um, thank, yes, you. And thank you very much for joining us. Uh, please do connect with myself if any of the messages have really touched you tonight. If you'd like any advice and support as well from me with this. Um, and I look forward to connecting with you on this amazing journey through motherhood. And remember that being a super mum is all about being the mum that you want to be. Thanks, guys. Remember, don't forget to hit subscribe and turn on your notifications to never miss out on a video again.